dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,300 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Marjorie Reynolds in Susie of the Sawdust, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now, here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, Wendell, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where each week, famous names from Filmland's capital step from the screen to our microphone for your entertainment. One of the most glorious and radiant of all motion picture stars steps into the feature role of our bright comedy. Marjorie Reynolds is our leading lady, and our play title is Susie of the Sawdust. Susie, that's Marjorie, works in an office and has a crush on her boss. She wouldn't like me to call it a crush, for to her it's the real thing. I guess maybe it is too. Anyway, she handles king cobra snakes and becomes a target for a knife thrower, all because of love. Our curtain in a moment, but first, Wendell Niles. America is proud of her soldiers and airmen. For good reason, too. Your regular Army and U.S. Air Force men are some of the finest in the country, and they're doing important work. They are a symbol of democracy, the free way of life. They're helping maintain the security of America and peace in the world. They represent the people of our country and their desire to lead a happy and tranquil life. Give them your support. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on the first act of Susie of the Sawdust, starring Marjorie Reynolds as Susie. All is youth and excitement today for the circuses in town. From a window of the advertising offices of William Gerard Incorporated, three people watch the circus. Bill Gerard, the boss himself, Susie Drake, his pretty and daffy secretary, and the office boy, Susie's youthful admirer, Ambrose Reps. They are watching the parade and getting younger every minute, which may explain the reactions to some of the strange events about to happen to them. Here they come, Susie, the wild animals. Marcel Armitage and his lions and tigers. Emperor, the royal Bengal tiger and other creatures of his stripes. Oh, boy, there's, uh, there's a certain air about a circus. Yeah, but you get used to it after a while. Let me run out and buy two tickets for us, huh, Susie? Hey, will you look at that? The Princess Tanagra and her great king cobras. I knew Tanagra in Cleveland six years ago. A snake charmer? How well I remember Tanagra. Is she a princess or is she from Flatbush? East Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, Susie, find out where Tanagra's staying, will you? Oh, probably some convenient snake pit. <laughs> oh, telephone a hotel for me, will you? Yes, Mr. Gerard. And if she's not in a room, I'll, I'll have her paged in the chandelier of the main ballroom. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Susie, I had a hard time promoting two circus tickets yesterday for tonight. And I finally got in touch with Tanagra, the Serpent of the Nile. Yeah? Oh, what's she like? I think she likes snakes. <laughs> she ought to make a lot of friends in town. Well, after five words with a princess, I was all in favor of a republic. Well, what's wrong with Tanagra? She talks with too much muscle. And she likes Bill Gerard. She's coming to see him. When? Tanagra! Now. Gee, Tanagra. Uh, who shall I say is calling? And I do mean calling. Just tell Bill it's Tanagra, dearie. Not Tanagra, dearie, of the Beacon Hill, dearie. Mm -hmm. You're cute, aren't you? I manage never to carry my own tray at the automat. Yeah, well, suppose you buzz your boss and say I'm here. Uh, give me Mr. William Gerard, please. Where can I put the suitcase where it'll be safe? I put it right behind that extra desk, Princess. <laughs> here, let me handle it oh, for no, you. Oh, no, 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 it's valuable. It don't look valuable, all those holes in it. Well, it's the holes gave Swiss cheese his reputation. Oh, that's very true. Uh, <laughs> is it all right here? Well, that's just fine, Princess. Yeah, it won't be in anybody's way there, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh, Princess, may, may I have your autograph? In ink or in cobra venom, Ambrose? Listen to me, sister. Oh, I'm sorry, Princess, but Mr. Gerard is all tied up. Conference with Mr. Rappentwine. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 
I'll tell you what you can do, dearie. Does that go both ways, dearie? Pick up that telephone and call Rockwood, 2311, and ask for Doc. I'll talk to him. I'll bet he'll be surprised that you can. And after you get Doc on the phone, you might call Mr. Gerard on the office phone again. And this time, don't hold down the hook on the telephone, get it? All is fair in love and war. Well, the war is over. I didn't sign anything. Hello? Doc? <laughs> One moment, Doc. Doc? The Queen Mary is in. Princess Tanagra. Oh, I thought you were due for a promotion. Give me that phone. Uh, may I have my left thumb back, please? Hello, Doc. Tanagra. Well, how the heck are you? Deaf by now. Sure, I'm in town, didn't you hear? You did before she got on the phone. Here's my problem. Baby is teething. Baby? And when can I bring her in? Oh, hello, Bill. Uh, there's a Princess Tanagra well, to come see on. you. I have to be all right, Doc. I'll tell her, Bill. Yeah, Doc, you said it. <laughs> well, see you tomorrow, then. Yeah. Yeah, bye. Mr. Gerard will be right out. Well done. Well, if he is, he will be soon. I don't like that crack. Well, that's what the thin man said as he slipped through the sidewalk. Tanagra! Oh, Billy Willie! I think I'm going to woo. Relax, Susie. <laughs> Tanagra, you look the same as ever. That's a compliment. Oh, Susie, this is Tanagra, a very old friend of mine. Well, she certainly is. But she doesn't look 50, does she? That is absolutely the limit. You're way over the limit. Why, do you want to live forever? Oh, come on, girls, Why, girls. you let me at her, Billy, let uh, me uh, at her. Now there, you ladies, break it up, break it up. Bill, I have news for you. She is broken up. Oh, and let me get a pistol of that bleached hair. Oh, Tanagra, come, come on, come along with me, come on now. Oh, well, all right. We'll step into my office. Come along, princess. Yeah, I want to talk to you, Bill. I, I've been thinking about retiring from circus life. I like you, and I'd like to work for you. Maybe a nice sex job like Well, uh, come into my office. Maybe there's something I can do for you. Well, after all, I can answer the telephone, too. Susie, did you hear that? Yes, I heard it, and this I know. There isn't room for Tanagra and me in this office. Oh, Bill, it'd never fire you. Well, I'd quit first. Good morning. Now what? And good morning. Who's he? And good morning. And did a certain lady named Princess Tanagra happen to... Well, good morning. Your mother is inside, Sonny boy. Oh, ho, ho. do I look that young? Mm, there's another way to look at it. You haven't had a tiff with Aunt Tanagra. Catch as catch can, and I caught it. Aunt Tanagra's a tough customer, girlie. By now, she ought to be. Are you in her act, mister? Son, I am the act. From start to finish, I'm the sparkling brains of the whole performance. Well, I think your aunt wants to get out of the act. Fine. Well, not with me, it isn't. She wants my job, and I like my job, and I like her, uh, admire, uh, well, I like to work for Mr. Gerard, and, and I don't care for your aunt to come in here, and, uh, well, I just don't like it. Oh, you mean she wants to work here? Yes. Well, this is serious. Uh, by the way, when do you go to lunch? Whenever anybody asks me, and thank you very much. So, let's get out of here. <laughs> Gee, Royal, I'd do anything for Bill Gerard, but well, if he doesn't want me to work for him anymore, I'll go to work for another advertising company, like Gwyn and Barrett. Or, or... Oh, I wouldn't do that, Susie. Well, I want to save Bill from Tanagra, even if she is your aunt. Oh, no, let him have Tanagra. Well, what about your act? Listen, I've just been waiting for Tanagra to walk out on the act. She been getting hisses from the Cobras? Uh, Tanagra doesn't understand that our act's a business as well as a fine art. Even snake charming needs bookkeeping, a little basic arithmetic. Why don't you use adders instead of cobras, then? Hmm. The real answer is to have a real businesswoman with business experience in the act. Um, like you. Me? For example, I've been trying for weeks to get off a letter to the man who supplies us with our snakes. Someone with chronic delirium tremens, no doubt. Now, with you around, I could simply say, Susie, take a letter. All righty, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Messieurs Jones and Jones, Sideshow Supplies, Poisonous and Non-Poisonous Snakes, uh, Wrigley Building, Chicago. <laughs> Go on. Now, you see, you've got it already. With you around, that letter would have been written long ago, and we'd have our new snakes. You couldn't have the old ones retreaded. We need snakes desperately. Look under any rock or behind any steering wheel, <laughs> mostly convertible. The rather unsettled conditions in East India are making it almost impossible to obtain our king cobras when we need them. That's what's worrying Tanagra. She's looking for security and a new job. Well, I can see where she'd have her doubts about a future that's full of poisonous snakes. Cobras especially. <laughs> for the right girl, there's more to the future than just that. Much more. You mean you're thinking of getting rattlers too? Listen, I know the entire circus and sideshow business top to bottom, inside out. I've got plenty of angles. 
Do me this favor, will you? Come to the show tonight. Well... I want you to catch me in my act. Catch you in your act? Then we can talk further in my tent. Catch you in your act? Please. Oh, all right. Shall I bring a net or a basket? <laughs> Gerard is having dinner with Tanagra after the show tonight. I heard him tell her on the phone today. Oh, let him. But I think he's planned a big night. He won't be in the office until noon. He says for you not to come in until noon either. Having dinner with her, huh? Well, bone appetite. What's that, bone appetite? French for maybe a bone will stick in her throat. Hey, is, is that all Royal does, play the flute for his aunt? Mm, that's a pretty big snake coming out of that hamper. Ah, it's a fake. Well, it ain't spaghetti, son. Probably harmless black snakes. Um, look, Susie, why don't you and me go to dinner after the show? I can't afford it. And besides, I've got to talk business to Royal. Do you just talk to him or do you hiss at him in Morse code? <laughs> a job is a job, Ambrose. If Tanaka takes my job, I'll take hers. She's taking a powder on Royal? She can't have her snake and beat it, too. Pause briefly from our story, Susie of the Sawdust, starring Marjorie Reynolds as Susie, to bring you an important message from your government. If flying's in your blood, young man, this is for you. And if you want an exciting career that pays well, this is also for you. By this, I mean the U.S. Air Force Aviation Cadets. Uncle Sam is now training more Air Force Cadet pilots than ever. And that means if you're qualified, a great career is open to you. If accepted, you'll receive one of the finest aviation trainings in the world. Upon successful completion, in one year's time, you'll win those coveted pilot's wings, and you'll be commissioned an officer in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Your pay will range up to $336 a month. And here's a special point. If you're an outstanding cadet, you have a very good chance of receiving a commission in the regular Air Force. Yes, men, as an Air Force pilot, you'll be one of America's outstanding citizens. Ask at your nearest Air Force base or recruiting station about the qualifications for cadet pilot training. Do it now. The curtain rises on the final act of Susie of the Sawdust, starring Marjorie Reynolds as Susie. The circus came to town, and with it came glamorous but hoyden Princess Tanagra the snake charmer who complicated Susie Drake's life by imperiling Susie's secretarial job with her beloved boss, Bill Gerard. Royal, Tanagra's nephew, would welcome her leaving the show so that he could have Susie in the act with him. He's invited Susie to see the show tonight. Object? Business. Strictly business. Well, Susie, how'd you like our act out there? Well, you know that third cobra from the left with the snake hips? Terrific. <laughs> I thought you had more to do, though. Listen, Susie, in six months, I'll have a piece of every side show on the lot. Five years, and I'll own the whole circus. But we've got to start small, you and me. With those there snakes? Me? They don't bite. No? No. Well, how do they live? Drink milkshakes? This is a trade secret. Every snake we work with has had his poison fangs removed. No teeth? Of course not. Oh, they grow back again in a few months, but then we just have them removed again. Well, uh, how long since Joe Squirm and his friends have had their dental work done? Three weeks ago, they're safe. 
and I'm going to let you pick one of them up. Oh, no. Why not? Oh, I'm a nice girl. I don't pick up strange reptiles. Nonsense. Besides, I, I hear they bruise easy. Here, here, let me open the hamper. Do not tamper with the hamper. There. Oh. So? So long. I'll play him a flute, and as soon as one comes out, just grab him behind the hood. Here goes. No, no. Oh, go ahead. You want Tanagra's job, don't you? She's taking your job. Hmm. Besides, this is fun. Let's go now, huh? Good girl. Uh, 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 here, snakey, 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 snakey. Uh, oh, dear, here comes one out of the basket. Uh, here, snakey. Uh, oh, oh, um, got a saucer of milk for you. Uh, that big fellow's Rangoon. He's he, the dean of our staff. Oh, oh, what a kisser on that hisser. Well, keep it up, Susie. Keep it going. Uh, nice, Rangoon. A good old fellow. Uh, come let Susie scratch your ears for you. Nice, Nay. Nice. Uh, now, Royal. Now. Uh, nice, Rangoon. Uh, gotcha. Uh, oh, what do I do now? What do oh, I do now? Fine, what do fine. I do with him? What do I... Uh, put him back. Put him back in the hamper, but don't just drop him. Push him away oh, from him. Oh, beat it, Snake. Oh, oh that's it. Now, now, oh. Oh, oh, and that's all there is to it. Now, was that so difficult? Well, come to think of it, no. Uh, let's do it once more. Oh, no, uh, uh, no thanks. You get them used to being picked up, and then they always want to be picked up. Spoils them. Well, frankly, I have bigger plans for you. Oh, you're going to play a clarinet instead of a flute so I can handle a boa constrictor. No thanks, John. No, no, I... no, Susie, let's forget the snake act for a while. I, uh... I want you to look at what I have in this case. There. Knives? Eighteen perfectly balanced steel throwing knives. Well, what did you have to do to get them? Well, you see that board there with a human figure outlined on it? Yes. So? That's my target. You mean you throw knives? Mm, that's my eye. And you want to cut me in on that, too? <laughs> cut me in? What am I saying? Susie, you've a beautiful figure. Well, let's keep it that way. An audience would be all for you. And all we need is new blood in the act. What happened to all the old blood? Are you afraid? Afraid? <laughs> you amuse me. Well, Tanagra's stealing your job. Have you the courage to take hers? Well, not only my job, my dream man. <laughs> oh. You see? And I never miss. Huh. What I want to know is, do you ever hit? Never. Let's try it. Uh, you go over and stand against the board. <laughs> goody, goody, gun pop. Go ahead. That's it. Now, turn around. Oh, now I lay me down to sleep. Now, stand still. Don't move. Uh, smile. <laughs> Steady now. And a one, and a two, and a three. <gasps> Boing! <laughs> Good shot. That went right between your right arm and your body. Steady now. And a one, and a two, and a three. <gasps> oh, you got me. I'm hit. <laughs> oh, you oh, are. Oh, now. I am. My ear. Where's my ear? <laughs> help, plastic surgeon, Susie. plasma, first aid, help. You're perfectly all right. Well, then right. what happened to my ear? Where's my left ear? It's under your hair, not on top of it. What? Oh. The handle just touched your ear in passing, that's all. Oh. After all, it's harder on a live target. Well, it was hard on me, all right. Why, I... What do you mean, harder on a live target? Especially the first time. Do you mean to say that this is the first time you've ever thrown a knife at a live person? <laughs> You'd find who, didn't I? Well, you could have killed me. The odds were against That's it. That's murder. Mm-mm. Manslaughter. I looked it up before I tried it. You... Oh. Well, that's what I mean by being businesslike about my profession. Uh-huh. Could I uh, have a look at one of those knives, Sonny Boy? Sure. Best you can buy. Here. Uh-huh. You, uh, you now have two shoulder blades, right? Yes, yes, that's normal. Would you like to try for three? What do you mean? Start running, Royal, and if I can put this knife between your shoulder blades... Susie! Start running, Susie. Sonny Boy! No, start Susie. running! No. <laughs> Susie? Susie? Anyone in the office? Mr. Gerard? Bill? Boss? Susie? Fine thing. 12.15 and no one in the office. Oh, there's a note on Susie's desk. Uh, Dear Mr. Gerard, came in at noon as per your instructions. Have gone out to lunch. Susie? Hmm? Huh? William Gerard, Inc., advertising. Are you the office boy? I am Ambrose Greps, office manager, uh, third assistant. This is Princess Tanagra. <laughs> Bewitched. 
Do me a big favor. Bring that empty suitcase behind the spare desk down to the side show in a taxi, will you? I need it right away. Oh, I'm sorry, Princess. I'm all booked up. Well, then I'll come for it myself. Just get it ready for me, that's all. Goodbye. Who does she think she is, that phony princess? <clears throat> empty suitcase. It doesn't feel empty. Yeah, but it, it was empty when Tanagra brought it in. I didn't put nothing in it. And Mr. Gerard ain't leaving, and besides, he has his own luggage. Who could... Susie. Oh, no, she don't. She ain't running off with that character royal. She's not joining any circus. I'll fix that. Mm, who do they think they are? They're snakes. Oh, snakes. Cobra, help. <laughs> Never have come to work this afternoon, never. Hmm? Hey, boss, uh, look out! Oh, Ambrose, for Pete's sake, what are you doing up on that filing cabinet? Boss, don't move. Look at the floor. Hmm? Oh! Get the police, get the fire department, get somebody! No, no, don't get excited. Let's get to work now. Get to work? Mr. Gerard, don't go to your desk. You'll cut yourself off from the door like happened to me. It's a snake. I know, I know. Now, let's get some work done. A cobra, a genuine king cobra. Yeah, yeah, it's a real beaut this time. This time? Biggest snake I've seen since the old bootleg days. Boss, I'm telling you. I never had the morning after so bad that other people saw them, too. Must be getting old. Oh, well. Get up on your desk. He's coming for you. What? What? Oh, great snakes, it, this isn't a hangover. But can't you make a few telephone calls uh, while yeah. you're up on your desk? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, uh, hello, operator, give me a snake. I, I mean, connect me with a cobra. Uh, operator! Hello, boy. Hey, Susie, Look Susie. Out. Well, for goodness sake. There's snakes, snakes. Go, go oh, for help. Oh, oh, that. It's a cobra. Yeah, I know. That's Rangoon. It's deadly poison. Susie, you back out and get the police. I'll go looking for a cane. Uh, won't you, Ambrose? No. You're fired. Oh, don't get worked up, boys. I'll handle this situation. All you do is walk up to the friendly little fellow. Susie, darling, don't. I beg of you. Susie, what did you say? I don't want to be a widower before I'm a groom, that's all. Bill. All right, now get away from that animated rope. Oh, William, dear, for you, anything. No, no. Oh, you inspire me. Here, Snakey. Oh, there's a good fellow. No, there. stop her. I can't. There, now, Snakey. So there, so and <gasps> Grab him. Into the suitcase. There you are, Rangoon. Susie. Oh, um, and so to work. Hi, folks. I came for that suitcase of mine I just telephoned about. Well, Jerusalem. What's wrong? You tell me what's wrong. Why is everybody pale green? Oh, the snake got out, that's all. What are you doing with that suitcase? You mean baby? Baby got out? Oh, luckily, I remembered some of my childhood snake lore. That, along with a smattering of Hindustani, which I happen to possess. What I want to know is, was anybody bitten? Oh, dear, no. Ah, it's a relief. You might have all been dead in five minutes. <laughs> Huh? I was going to take baby to the vet to have her poison fangs removed, but he kept stalling me off. You mean that isn't Rangoon? No, this is baby. The b baby has teeth? It ain't bridge work, dearie. Why? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Oh. Susie! Su Susie! <laughs> Are you all right now, Susie? Oh, where's Tanagra? I sent her packing with her king-size fishworm, darling. I'm all right. What did you say? I said, darling. Oh, better send for Tanagra to come back. Why? Well, you're going to need a secretary, aren't you? I'll be busy with the house and babies. <laughs> Curtain falls in the final act of Susie of the Saga. Our star, Marjorie Reynolds, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Men, here's an outfit that's known and respected throughout the world. Yes, just about everybody has heard of the constabulary of the U.S. Army. Now, you young men have the opportunity to join this colorful outfit doing occupation duty in Germany. If qualified, you can enlist in the Army for direct assignment to these yellow scarf troopers. And here's another great opportunity. The Army's famous 1st Division is also looking for top-flight men. The first, every bet as distinguished as the constabulary, is also carrying out interesting occupation tasks in Europe. So there you have it, men. Your chance to make your career in either one of two honored Army units, the constabulary and the 1st Division. You'll be doing some of the most interesting work open to a young man today. 
Ask at your local recruiting station right away all about this new enlistment opportunity. Now back at the microphone, our star, Marjorie Reynolds, and our producer. Well, Marjorie, it's good to see you back again in Hollywood after your long and, I understand, quite successful tour in England. It's good to be back, C.P. Let's see, you were over there in... Oh, in a stage play, Burlesque, uh, the British edition of the Broadway hit. You were away more than six months, weren't you? Yes, it was a long tour. I guess we covered most of England. Manchester, Brighton among the cities, and finished up in London. At the Garrick or the Princess? Uh, both of the theaters, C.P. How are the audiences? Oh, really very good. Everywhere. And their reactions are all very enthusiastic. You know, Marjorie, I fully expected you to return with an accent very British, Oxfordian. <laughs> well, that's just the point. When I started thinking about accent before I went over, I was concerned. And then I realized that our Hollywood English, you know, like Clark Gable, Robert Taylor, Robert Montgomery, George Murphy speak, well, it's really international. And if I used ordinary colloquial speaking rather than, say, some of our regional accents, then I shouldn't have any trouble. And uh, you were received there the same as our audiences, except any of the better British actors here. No trouble at all. Well, the only trouble I had was with their slanting stages. Oh, the rake. That's some of their customary engineering. They think the slanting stage gives the audience a better view. <laughs> well, you should have seen my first dance. I uh, canted to leeward like an <laughs> automobile with a sprung frame, but uh, managed to keep out of the footlights. And the audience's lap. And now you can laugh about it. But it was serious then. I'll bet your ad lib ability was improved, too. Oh, well, was it? And you should have been watching one scene. I, I was to make a brilliant exit through the doorway, and the doorknob fell off in my hand. <laughs> yes, I learned ad lib. But I loved it. And I want to go back over there again. Before you do, be sure to come back for another visit here with us, will you? Oh, thank you. I will. Now... Who's playing next week, C.P.? Well, next week, Marjorie and ladies and gentlemen, we present a period play, Paul Revere Rode a White Horse. It seems that the silversmith, Revere, has an assistant who departs from the alloy formula for sterling by adding elements of romance. Richard Ney portrays the handsome Revere assistant. Grand. I'll be listening. Goodbye. Goodbye, Marjorie. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we present Richard May and Paul Revere Rode a White Horse. Until then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Marjorie Reynolds appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinator Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Milton Geiger, and music under the direction of Eddie Scrivanek. This program was transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.